Number 40, predict the valence electron molecular orbital configurations for the following and state whether they will be stable or unstable ions. And then we have Si2, 2 plus. All right. So in order to find out the actual configuration for Si2, 2 plus, the thing that we have to figure out is how many total valence electrons are there in this molecule? Well, we are dealing with silicon, right? And if we look on the periodic table for where silicon is, silicon is in group 4A, and that's a terrible four. Silicon's in group 4A or 14, depending on you know what your periodic table says. Um, just know that it's lucky number four, right? So in those groups, your valence electrons, you have four valence electrons. But the thing here is that you have two silicons. So each silicon has four valence electrons. You got two of them. So we're just multiplied by two, right? I have two silicons. I'm going to times by four valence electrons. And two times four, I'm now dealing with a total of eight valence electrons. However, they gave us a plus two charge. <laughs> And remember, plus in chemistry means that you lost. You are losing two electrons. So I have to take my eight valence electrons and just minus two electrons to get my now total valence. So my total would now be six valence electrons for the whole molecule for the two silicons. All right, so that's great. Now, the second thing is that we're going to have to make a decision. What molecular orbital general configuration am I going to use? Am I going to use the top one or the bottom one? The difference here is between your S orbital and P orbital mixings. Now, this idea is a little bit higher than just a regular general chemistry course. Uh, when you get into physical chemistry, if you are in a chemistry major, you'll definitely get into this. But for this, just know that there's two general configurations and they go by group. Since we're dealing with something that's in 4A, this is the general configuration that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna pull this up and I'm going to just state that this is Si2, two, two plus. And since I'm not using the bottom one, I'm going to get rid of it. But if you wanna pause the video and just you know, copy it down, that's fine with me, but I just like to have more room, so there you go. All right, now, just know that this mess is just talking about your different molecular orbitals, right, your bonds, whether you're making a sigma molecular orbital, like a sigma bond, or pi bonds, right? Now, just know that for every bonding molecular orbital, I don't see a star up here. Anytime that you don't see any stars, so this one, or this one, or this one, those are all bonding. But anytime that you do see stars, those are your antibonding equivalents. So here's bonding and antibonding. These two are bonding. Here are the antibonding equivalents, bonding and antibonding equivalent. But now we just have to fill in our six valence electrons in this diagram. Now, the first thing is, is I just have to put in what S and what P are we in? Are we in the 2S or are we in the 3S? This comes from the period. So silicon is in group uh, 4A, but if I look on the periodic table, it is in group period three. And that's going to be, that's your N value. So you're in 3S and 3S and threes all across the board, 3PY, 3PZ, 3PX, PY. PZ, PX. Now just know that as you're going from left to right, you are increasing in energy. So you got to drop electrons first to your first orbitals and you keep going from left to right. I can't just drop like, you know, one electron here, one electron here, one electron here. You got to finish this orbital up first before you go to the next one. And just know that for each orbital, you're allowed a max of two electrons. So we have a total of six to fill. I have to start at the first one. This one only can have a max of two. Maybe I'll put it in green. So two electrons are going to be dropped in here. 
Okay, so I keep going. Now I'm over here, my antibonding orbital. I'm going to have to put the max electron for this one orbital. That's two. Okay, I'm almost there. I now have four electrons. I need a total of six, so I have only two to go. And these molecular orbitals are grouped together. But since I only have two left, I can just drop it right in here. Two, four, six. That's six total bounce electrons. And we're done. The rest of them technically have zero valence electrons, zero, zero, and zero. However, proper configuration notation is just stopping at the end of the last electron. So in this case, I'm just going to get rid of all of this, but it's good to just memorize just so that you know, you know when to stop. So for this case, we're stopping here. And this is my valence electron configuration. So that's the first part of the question. Now the second part of the question is just stating whether this is actually a stable or a unstable ion, right? Is Si2, 2 plus stable or unstable? Stability, especially with molecular orbital configurations, can be found with bond orders. Basically, you're searching, or you're, we're going to solve for a formula, and we hope that the bond order is not zero. If it is, that means that no bond will be formed. Zero, no bond. And if no bond is formed, it's unstable. But let's see what's going to happen here. Now, the formula for bond order is this. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. Bond order equals the number of total bonding electrons minus the number of total antibonding divided by 2. So that's why we have to draw this out first to then do the bonding, the bond order. Now remember, the ones that are the stars are your antibonding. If you do not have a star, those are your bonding. So how many total bonding electrons do we have here? Well, this one is a bonding, right? So I got two here, and these are bonding. I don't see any stars, so that's two. So two plus two is a total of four electrons here. And the other one, this is your antibonding because there's a star. So I have two electrons here. So my bond order would be equal to something divided by two. It would be four bonding electrons minus two antibonding. And if we just keep going with the math, four minus two is two. Two divided by two is one. This is not a zero. One, as a bond order, means that you're going to make a single bond, right? One, one line, single bond. And if you can make a bond, this would be classified as a stable ion. Once again, if you have a bond order of zero, no bonds are going to be formed and it's not going to be stable. So that's the end for this. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard, and tell your classmates, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you so much for all your support, and thanks for being part of this community. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.